Joel here and welcome to another episode of Engineering Roundtable. This week we're in my garage and we're going to be tackling another first world problem. I like to ride my bike to and from work and when I do I often forget to take the garage door opener out of my car and put it in my bicycle bag. To solve this problem I thought we would implement some RFID into a project and embed a RFID chip into my bike helmet since I always have my helmet when I'm riding my bike. This week we're going to build this project in real time rather than go over an already built project. So let's get started. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. There are typically two parts involved, a transmitter and a receiver. Transmitters can come in a variety of form factors such as cards, buttons, and small glass tubes. Each transmitter has a unique address associated with it, allowing you to embed them into everyday devices used for identification. The most common application is using RFID cards for building entry. For the sake of simplicity, I decided to use a long wire I had laying around instead of making a wireless system. Since I am able to hide the wire in my garage rafters, I wasn't worried about unsightly cables. I used a USB wall wart and a mini USB cable to power the SparkFun RFID reader, which has an ID20 reader attached to it. I chose the ID20 because it has the greatest range of all of our readers. In order to make sure the reader worked over the long cable distance, I plugged it into an FTDI basic which feeds into my laptop. I gave my RFID button a swipe to determine its RFID address appeared in the terminal window. Everything worked great, which meant I could now enclose the reader. I had a few of these two-piece gray enclosures laying around. Their thin profile made it ideal for securing the reader, as well as allowing the reader to pick up the RFID frequency from the button. A bit of soldering attaches the transmission wires to the reader. Using my favorite tool around the garage, my trusty Dremel, I bored some holes in the side for the power and transmission cables and mounted a bracket on the back. And finally, the reader is secured to the enclosure using the most sophisticated adhesion apparatus known to man, double-sided sticky tape. Next, I had to mount the enclosure close enough to the door for the RFID reader to pick up the signal, but far enough that it would clear the door opening. When it comes to custom bracketry, nothing beats scavenging parts from my old erector set. After a little bending and fitting, the box was mounted. I strung the wire from one corner of the garage to the other where the existing garage door button lives. Inside the garage door opener are two screw terminals with wires sticking out of each. When these two wires are shorted together, the state of the garage door changes. Using an Arduino Pro Mini, a beefcake relay, and a few other miscellaneous bits and wires, I built a control panel that takes the information from the transmission wire, checks for the correct RFID address, and closes the relay accordingly, thus shorting the wires and telling the garage door to open or close. This could be accomplished with the transistor as well, but I chose the beefcake relay because the wires have 110 volts running through them. The very last step was embedding the RFID button into my bicycle helmet. Again, using my favorite tool, the Dremel, and a dab of hot glue. Now all I have to do is ride up to my garage door. Open sesame! I hope you enjoyed this real-time version of Engineering Roundtable, and I hope I inspired you to use RFID in your next project. We'll see you again in two weeks.